Hi and welcome to another edition of Onside SA, the soccer show that gives you all the info. But our man is here and uh, we're going to be talking, of course, about last one standing. And it's getting that time where it's uh, edge of the seat stuff. We've cut down from 12 to 8. Budge, yeah. we, we, we spoke last week about who could come through. Some of those guys that you've yeah, tipped have sneaked us in, yeah. have sneaked in. Leicester buried them. Yeah, shame, Paul. You know, Leicester... What do you do? They buried us as well, Paul. Yeah. Just don't understand. You beat Man City, Everton, and Chelsea, and you can't beat Cardiff and yeah. uh, and Southampton at home, Paul. No one of the fans are going crazy. Yeah, I, I can see that. You just to let you know we're down to eight people. We're going to give you the names, and we're going to have a budget. I'm going to have a little nitpick on who we think can go through and win this prize. Now, Gareth Petzer went at the, uh, last week with two. He's lost yeah. one. He lost one. Yeah, he lost Leicester. Yeah. He's taken Everton. And then Mark Hartford, you know the man? Yeah, one of my Durban North boys stayed the in. Durban North Dorpus. He's confident. He thinks he's favourite. So good luck to Mark. OK, Mark Hartford. Hilton Vince, he's a racing yeah. man. He's still going well. Going he had well. Liverpool. Gary Citrin. Yep, your the, mate. Everyone's from that area. He's, he's only... Stronger. Yeah. OK. Skip Wallace. Ernie, Ernie Wallace. Yeah, he's going for the double, Paul. He'll be the first guy to win it twice, eh? If yeah. he wins it, he's still going strong. Mark Faree has used... Unfashionable yeah. teams. Well, Mark and Hilton have used the, the, the lesser used teams. I know last week they used, Mark used Chelsea, Hilton used Liverpool. So they've got the teams, Paul. But I just remember Dean Alcock, he had Man United and he had five big teams last year. United lost at home to West Brom. Yes, that's right. So uh, there's no, no good things, no rules, yeah. Calvin Bucken. Yeah, Calvin. Chelsea. Yeah, he works for Clinton Price. He's okay. done well. It's been an and Kevin the, the Power jump. Taylor. Yeah, <laughs> Kevin Fulham boy. He'll be on his hands and knees this week, praying Fulham get a result. They got no chance of result this week. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay, lovely. So we've just gone to the next competition for those of you watching is on the 8th of February. We start the next one. There's eight people left, and uh, Budge will have uh, all out in the WhatsApp for us. But uh, let's get uh, into Stevie B. Let's hope we get him loud and clear. Stevie in the London studio? Loud and clear. Loud and clear. Fantastic. Oh, morning, morning. We've got a few things we want to ask you. Budge has compiled a few mm. stories. But uh, we'll keep Spurs and Fulham till later. <laughs> Steve, yeah, uh, obviously everything much later, I think. Much later. Well, you never know. This could be a weekend, Steve. Steve, what's this about uh, all the match, well, match watcher, Leeds United? Spine. All the spine. Yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's very amusing. And, and in fact, yesterday, I don't know if you saw the, uh, the, the Bielsa uh, press conference, because he called a press conference yes. yesterday to basically stand up and tell all the press that, you know, you know, that's what they do. They do it's that common before practice. every game, and, yeah. and it's not illegal, and they might not be right, but that's, that's what they've done. It's uh, amazing, really. Yeah. No, the, the Stevie, just uh, can you hear me this week? Last week we battled a bit. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, Stevie, as you say, they, they they say we're doing nothing wrong. You know, Rambler's Wonders. We had Robbie Martin <laughs> in the trees. We well, called I'm, him Russell I, I, Martin. I they, that's fine, but I think it certainly doesn't it, it, it doesn't sort of go to, you know to the spirit of the game. And I think the EFL will probably impose some sanctions. I think because it's uh, it's sort of deemed to be unethical against the spirit of. Uh, look, I mean, you know, fair play to them. For what he's saying is they 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 do their homework anyway. They watch the games, they analyse, and they do this as well. And there they are, sitting four points clear at the top. So uh, it's obviously working for them. But I think it's sort of left a bit of a bad taste, uh, you know, that uh, you know for the clubs who who have sort of, especially where they have what they call closed training sessions, and they yeah. want someone. To, literally standing outside, you know, peering over a fence looking at them. Stevie, if they're going to, you know, it, to me it'll be double standards if they say it, it attacks the spirit of the game. Do you think diving, playing for time, all those things, that, 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 that hits right at the heart of the spirit of the game. There's yeah, no spirit yeah, of the game. I, it's win at all costs, Stevie. This is something that is probably, you know, maybe not quite been done in the same way before, and it sounds like, you know, it's a military operation, and they've got sort of people, I call them spies, but scouts at uh, every ground, watching their, you know, where they can opponents train before they play them. Yeah. Steve, but at the end of the day... You know, you can do what you do on the training pitch. You still got to score the goals and stop them on the no, weekend. No, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and evidently, he he did this um, in Spain um, when they were playing Barcelona once. And Guardiola said, "Well, it didn't make much difference because we beat them by three goals to nil." Yeah. So, you know, I think that's a fair point. Yeah, I think the only way you can maybe use it is 
if the guys are going through the final team preparation, then at least you know who's playing so you can try and counter what they do. But uh, Yeah, and I think, but more often than not, I mean, that is quite critical because yeah. obviously teams don't have to announce, uh, clubs don't have to announce the actual team until out, effectively an hour or so before kickoff. Yeah. Now, it may well be that, you know, clubs like to change the formation and keep the opponents guessing. Mm. I guess if you sort of turned up at the other team's training ground on a Friday and you can see the team that, and, and the formation they're playing, yeah. you know, it does give you a bit of an advantage. So... Uh, you know, I, I think they. I think something will happen. I, th I think they will have to stop doing it. Yeah. I, I can't see that the e EFL will 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 allow them to, to carry on. Yeah. Well, I think if the teams know, they'll they'll obviously alter their plans. Yeah. Well, I think that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, you you know, they, if they think that there's someone watching them, they could do something and then change it at the last minute. So yeah. you know, it might backfire on them. But certainly. Um, it, it it was just the way that obviously he came out yesterday, um, and and sort of rather than sort of try and deny it, I mean they basically yeah. said, yeah, you know, we not only did we do it at Derby, we've done it, for, you know, basically every single team yeah. that we've played. I think that sort of took everyone by surprise. Well, at least he's come out and been honest. So, well, yeah, people... I think I think that was obviously the right tactic. Yeah, and, I agree. And interesting enough, you know, there's a lot of tweets and things that are, some people are supporting him, saying, you know, fair play to him. Yeah. You know, he's obviously, uh, you know, very professional in the way that he goes about analysing uh, other teams, and, yeah. uh, and and you only have to look at the results. And, and Leeds are sitting top of the table. Yeah, that's no, I agree. Steve, on to Huddersfield. Uh, I couldn't believe it. They parted ways. I know it was mutual consent. David Wagner, what do you think about that? I, I, I was surprised. I thought at the end of the day, look, I, I, you know, I think they will go down unless yeah. there is some miracle for them. I think they will go down. And, and he, you thought, would be the best place to to um, sort of regroup and, and, and have a charge at the championship again next year. So maybe maybe it's just got to him. Um, you know, I don't think that, for the sounds of it, the chairman and the board have put him under any undue pressure. Mm. I think, you know, they're not able to support him in the transfer market as maybe they'd like to. Uh, and I think he's, you know, he, he did a, a ter tremendous job in the last two seasons there. Yeah. So uh, I'm not sure anybody they bring in is going to make any difference at this stage. So I said maybe they're just thinking about sort of next season. Yeah, he'll get a job in uh, in Germany, Steve. That's what I think. Yeah, he should do. He's done very well and... Mm. and uh, you know, with limited resources, he showed, you know, what's possible. Yeah, also, I just think his mannerisms, when they got beat, you know, he just seemed to be honest in everything he said and did. So, I agree, yeah. I think he'll get a job in in, in Germany. Steve, yeah. the Harry well, Kane situation... Let's, let's see who they bring in. I, I can't see any big-name manager going there and, no. not, you know, knowing that they, they're not going to be able to keep them up, probably. Yeah, that's true. Steve, uh, Harry Kane, I know Paul's chomping at the bit. What's the latest on him from your side? Well, it sounds as if he is going to be out till March. I think they seem to think minimum of 11 games and, and some crucial games there as well. I think it's a huge loss for Tottenham, I mean, whatever they say. And not just, obviously, losing Harry Kane, but obviously they've lost Hume Min Song for, for a yeah. number of weeks, who's out in the Asia Cup. And I think, you know, the timing uh, of, of the two combined, when, you know, they account for basically half their goals, I think, uh, I think it's going to be a lot... A lot to ask of the remaining. Steve, players. I've got I've got the uh, the actual update. Following preliminary assessments, we can confirm that Harry Kane has damaged ligaments in his left ankle sustained during Sunday's match. He will continue to be monitored by medical staff as he commences rehabilitation, expected to return in training well, in early it, it, March. You know, it, you know him, uh, Harry Kane is is Tottenham's talisman. There's no question yeah, at all. Class, but when he's on song and he's scoring goals, you know anything's possible. I think. Uh, yeah, I think if they can sort of keep their place in the top four and they can get through to a later stage of any of the cups without him, I think that would be a very good performance. Yeah, no, I agree with you 100. percent I was just they're, they're already sending out limericks about Kane. Yeah, <laughs> my name's Harry Kane. It's not more than a sprain. Yeah, and I'll be back in March again. It's, it's, it's very funny. <laughs> Steve, uh, yeah, onto the better. I see Martin O'Neill. Is it confirmed yet? He's taking over yes, Notts Forest. Y yes, it is, and I think that's a very good. Uh, you yeah. know, I, I felt sorry for for Ita Karanka. I think that uh, you know he's a good manager. Yeah. Um, just something wasn't quite right there at Forest uh, for him at the end, and uh, you know, and, and and he left. But I think Martin O'Neill is a, is a very good uh, appointment, and I think you know, obviously, you know, he had his, you know, he's a bit of a hero there for. Yeah. Uh, being in the sort of championship and European Cup winning side, and I think you know he'll bring, um, you know, 
lot of sort of calm positivity to, to well, the club. The Irish then, bulldog with him. You know, whether they'll get back on track enough to go up this year, but I think that he'll, uh, yeah. you know, he's definitely a good man to have there. Is uh, Roy Keane going with him? Paul seems to think he is. It looks like it, and that's interesting. I mean, I think that you know Roy Keane going back to the club he started at. Um, yeah. You know, when he moved from Ireland, he was at Forest, and I think a lot of people forget that. Uh, you know, he had a few few scenes at Forest before. Obviously, he went off to Man U, uh, and he did very well there. Yeah, that's true. Wonder if he would take his boots there as well. You know, yeah, probably, with a probably few good enough. Yeah, Steve, on to the the big game of the weekend in the Premiership: Arsenal, Chelsea. How do you see that one going? Yeah, I mean, I, I've been sort of fairly disappointed with Arsenal recently. Yeah, they just, you know, the, they don't seem to be uh, that team that were going on their unbeaten run. Um, you know, this is a huge game because they're both uh, they're both at the moment they're chasing. You know, Chelsea sitting in fourth, Arsenal in fifth. There's not much between them. I'm not sure that Arsenal have got enough uh, in the locker to beat Chelsea the way they've been playing recently. But having said that, you know, Chelsea just don't seem to be scoring many goals at them. You know, they just obviously Morata's not on, not firing. You know, it's likely that he probably will be leaving them. Yeah. If Hazard doesn't play to his best, um, you know, I could see this either be maybe a. Not much in it, maybe one goal in it. Either Arsenal might just pinch it or a draw. Yeah, I agree. I think it's uh, a funny game. Well, beforehand, when Mourinho was there and even Con Conte was there, it was a bit of a fiery affair. It just doesn't look like. I watch both teams. This doesn't seem to be anything Two NASCAR managers. Two uh, NASCAR managers, but does that help? Yeah, I, I can't see it being sort of too feisty, in all honesty. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, Chelsea have got a big game coming up next week against uh, Tottenham. Uh, in the cup, yes, uh, right. this is a game. I don't think either. Uh, this is a game neither team wants to lose because obviously, if if, Chelsea, if sort of Arsenal lose this, you know Chelsea sort of pull away from them. So, yeah. you know, I think it'd be a good game. I think it's, uh, but it's, it's not. I don't think it's going to be a classic, and it's not well, a, a top of the table clash like yeah. it has been in in prior years. Yeah, big game for Man United. Can't afford Chelsea to get a result here, especially with top four. Well, you know, play, I think that's yeah. interesting. If Arsenal win and United win, all of a sudden, you know, United are, uh, you know, really see, are closing yeah. the gap a bit. Okay. Steve, on to a team has been disappointed. I watched them last Sunday, Bournemouth. What's going on? Can you see them? Can you see them upset? Yeah, I mean, it's strange. I mean, Bournemouth have been very, have probably been the most active in the transfer market. Yeah. In the uh, and it's you know, and they're they're being linked again with uh, with someone. So they, you know, they've obviously decided that. You know, they they they're strengthening, and that, uh, they think they've done well. They've got Klein in yeah. on, on a load. I think he's a good uh, acquisition, good and I think they're trying to sort of bring in a centre. They look as though they're trying to sign, and they may have done a deal with Brentford to bring in a good young centre half, Chris Meppham. Okay. I think they've sort of realised players like Steve Cook are sort of getting a little bit long yeah. in the tooth now. So um, you know, they're not letting they're not sitting on the laurels, Bournemouth. I think this is the game that they could win at home. So do I. I think, you know, so a little bit I. about people at West Ham. With the Arnautovic situation. So I think Bournemouth might just, just pick this one. Sneak did, eh? Now, the big game, obviously, in the relegation, other than your boys, Fulham, Newcastle, Cardiff. Now, what's Newcastle the other night against Blackburn? He rested most of the players, and then the Skulls came on at half time and pulled a hammy within five minutes. How do you think? You th yeah, I mean they've lost. They've lost a couple. But this is for us. This is a sort of a sort of game. I mean, it's you really want neither to get any points, but yeah. uh, a draw will probably be the best result. I think for us, um, I think neither team would want to lose. You know, and, and and if any of them, either of them, win, then you know that gives them a bit of an opportunity to pull away. So I think it'll be a very low-scoring affair. I mean, neither teams. Uh, Cardiff don't score many on the road. Newcastle don't score many full stops. So yeah. I think it'll be a very, very close, uh, low-scoring game. Okay. And what about the high-scoring affair at Craven Cottage between Fulham and Tottenham? Uh, this, is, this is one of these. I mean, look, if, if if Tottenham were at full strength, then the, you know there would be no question they would score a hat for. I, I'm I'm going to stick my neck out here. I just think there's a bit of siege mentality going on at Fulham. With everything that's going on, I just think that we may just pull off a surprise. Sure. <laughs> give up, give up vodka this early in the morning. I, I know. I just, uh, you know, you always Jeez. ask me if I think there's going to be a shock in the Premiership. Yeah. yeah I can't is... see any of the others. I'm just going to think. I'm just going to think. You know, we have to start winning, and if we don't start winning soon, we're going down. And yeah. if ever there was a good sign to play Tottenham, possibly without Son and Kane, and one or two other injuries, this is it. So yeah. it, it it could either be nil three or it could be sort of two one for them. I'm you know I'm just I'm not yeah. I'm I'm going to go with my. Uh, the heart. Rather than my head, I think. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. Okay, <laughs> and then to, to, to end it all, Stevie, upset of the weekend. 
Uh, Apart it. from I'm, Fulham, know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with Fulham being beating okay. Tottenham. I'm just, look, we you can't know, talk to you for much longer. It, 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 stranger things have happened. We need we need one of those fluke results yeah. to get out because I think just beating a few teams around us won't be enough. We we need to beat somebody who we don't who no one expects. And I think you know oh. there's no reason why I think we will do it. I just got just think this is this is our time. This Steve, weekend. I'll give you the clue. Go and sign David de Gea for the weekend. Yeah. Spurs, uh, yeah. didn't matter what look, they threw I, it in. Look, were... Tot- you know, sorry, last weekend, Tottenham could have won by a hatful in the second half. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but again, you take Kane and Son out, you know, yeah, you know, only the Christian Everton yeah. and Deli Alli, doesn't We've it? We've got so, Mura, yeah. Loriente, Deli Alli. But Stevie, just one thing I want you to know, that when Spurs play Fulham, Sitting in my lounge Look, with me. It wouldn't me. surprise me that somebody like Laurenti will step up and score a couple of goals. <laughs> he he got a hat trick last time he started. For, for years, but it's, you know, you've said, uh, I think, Stevie, you know, you, we have to go into this thinking we've got to start winning, and obviously, uh, you know, with the worst defence in the league, you know, it's yeah. not gonna, we won't keep a clean sheet. One of the best attacking right. teams in the league. But here we go. Michael Abud arrives tomorrow. He's coming out. Here we sit in my lounge watching the Fulham Spurs game you just with cut me. Cut out, Paul. Sorry? Uh, he's just saying he's Marco Bud uh, will be in Durban watching uh, the Spurs game with Paul. So if you yes. want to send a few remarks, well, go, go for well, it. It's, you know, all I know is Paul, but just don't, kick, don't, don't kick the TV if, if your team <laughs> don't, don't win. He's got two in the lounge. <laughs> got Steve, uh, quickly on to the championship. Big game uh, yeah. on Friday night. That should be a cracker, shouldn't it? Norwich, Birmingham. Yeah, I mean Norwich have had a real wobble. I mean they, they yeah. you know, they score goals but they they've had a you know and Birmingham are a hard team to beat. I think I think Norwich might just pit might just pit Birmingham. I think that maybe the odd goal in three, but uh, you know, that's a time game. Birmingham are a hard team to beat, but Norwich's gotta get back on track. I think they'll do that. Yeah. Aston Villa Hull City. Well, I think this is a very interesting one. I mean Villa are just can't just are really struggling at the yeah. moment. Yet yeah, Hull City are on a run of sort of five and six and nine, wins yeah, in a row. Six, I think this yeah. would be closer than people think. Wouldn't surprise me if Hull Hull get at least a draw there. Uh, okay, uh, Middlesbrough seem to have clawed their way back. You think they can? Uh... Yeah, I think I think Middlesbrough are, you know will, will should win that. I think Mill showing a little bit of form at the moment, yeah. but I think Middlesbrough should be too strong. Okay, Notts Forest. You think with the, will the Martin O'Neill effect take uh, take place against Bristol City? I think they will. Um, I think that's a po- I think it's quite a possibility. They had a shocking result uh, uh, la- last weekend, sort of yeah. losing at Reading and having two players sent off. Uh, I think they'd like to bounce back. I think it'll be close. Bristol City are unbeaten in a few. I think that will that will be very good. Well, maybe a draw. I think there. And can you think the Leeds spying tactics will be good enough to beat yeah, Stoke City? Yeah, well, I mean, Stoke, again, just really seem to disappoint. You just think, just when they look as if they're picking up, they don't. I think this will be, I think this will be quite a feisty game. I think it's yeah. going to be expected. Big crowd there. I think Leeds might just edge that. Yeah. And any chance Preston North in getting a point or better at QPR? Uh, uh, QPR are playing, playing quite well at the moment. And at yeah. home, they're very strong. I think Preston are going to have to do something... Uh, more. I, I, think, I think QPR could win that, I'm afraid, much. Yeah, okay, see. Stevie, thanks. once again, thanks very much for your time. And, uh, Absolute pleasure, and we shall see what happens on Sunday, Sunday uh, yeah. late I'll, afternoon. I'll be as courteous as to say everything <laughs> of the best. <laughs> just, just, just watch out, look out for a few texts, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Get up yeah. there. All right, Steve. Indeed. All all Cheers, Stevie, all I'll the best. I'll take a draw now. <laughs> thanks, Stevie. All right, <laughs> bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Right. But let's get on to these Premier League fixtures. Yeah. Let's get rolling. Early game, Wolves. Yeah, just Wolves, Leicester, Paul. Just two teams you can't put your put your hand on, especially Leicester. You know, yeah. you, it's just Wolves, unbelievable. Wolves are good when they're good. Wolves good. At, you know, they beat Liverpool and they're chirping and crying, but I wouldn't the be Man surprised. The Man City game, how did they play, in your opinion? Yeah, you know, Paul, once the red card, it was, it was yeah. over. Yeah, over. You know, and Man City, right. whether they took the foot off the gas or not, but it was just uh, yeah. save the legs. Session, and, yeah. uh, you know, Wolves, you've got a fancy. But, you know, Leicester away from home have got a bit of results lately than at home. Yeah, amazing. So, uh, you know, a draw for me there, Paul. That's just the, it's the only game I don't really... I've got a feeling for, yeah? I've got a feeling for Bournemouth. No, I can't have them, Paul. Just watching them. West Ham... They played well the other yeah, day. Yeah, but West Ham played well against Arsenal. They I know Anatovic well. is causing a bit of is trouble. Is he still staying? What's his well, story? Gone to China? Well, that's what... Uh, you know, I don't think anything's confirmed yet. I may be wrong. 
his attitude didn't look right last week. He looks like he wants to go that, get the money. That night, there's a photo of him at the airport flying to you. I think Europe Must somewhere. Be out. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Andy Carroll will come in. They've got good players, Paul. That Philip Anderson. Yeah, they beat Arsenal player. fair and square last week, Paul. Yeah, I, I like I, West Ham of the I two I like teams. Bournemouth. I think Bournemouth played like quick. They were, they were stiff the other day. Yeah. But anyway, let's move on. Liverpool should be too good for Palace. Well, they should. The last 20 home league games, Paul, they won 17 and drawn three. I think yeah. they won the last six in a row. Yeah. Should no, no, be too good. Too good. Man United should beat Brighton, but Brighton well, are a tough nuggety team. I was disappointed in Brighton against Liverpool, Paul. You know, it was a freebie. They should have had a go. No, I know that Liverpool weren't good. No. They got a penalty. It, it was a penalty, you know. The yeah, Germans they fouled should him. They never but have tackled him. Yeah, they just, you know, I've seen them play better, Paul, and I'm just really disappointed in them. But have you seen the penalty stats? They always say the team is leading the league, and where, when it was Man United, or yeah. when it was Arsenal, when it was Chelsea. Now it's Liverpool, get all the breaks. Yeah. It's, it's always been a... But yeah, they're but always in the box. Six, since Christmas. Yeah. They've, they've been, Liverpool have had four penalties since Christmas. No other team's had more than one. Yeah, That's I'll interesting. Pull. But I'm just you know, saying... But uh, when you look at them, a lot of them were, I think, were penalties. Yeah, no, they, you, I agree with you. But it's just uh, when they touch and go, they go their way. And then yeah. no, Liverpool, that's true. Liverpool's uh, just the stats. These are yeah. stats. Four penalties, Liverpool... One for the next team. Yeah. Okay, but I, I think they're a very good side. Yeah. Excited, but I didn't think they were good against Brighton. No, they weren't. They haven't Brighton, been, they weren't they good haven't been on the game, Paul, but it's all yeah. about results. Yeah, that's right. So they'll probably eke one out here. Yeah, definitely. Man United, as I say, Brighton. Yeah, United should be. Yeah, yeah. Probably scoring goals. A little bit lucky, obviously, last week. Yeah, yeah. They that's why have David won, De Gea gets paid 200,000 yeah, no, a week. He's, but he's still, wonderful, wonderful keeper. You know, I think we'll score goals. Your defence so. is still shaky. No, Harry think. Kane turned that big oh. uh, Jones. Well, we've invisible Inside that out. back four of us. And we've got them behind them too many times. Yeah. But this is David said, De Gea, yeah. They're good going forward, the, the Marshall and yeah. Rashford. Very good going forward. We've got forward. a bit of the slow coaches and the yeah. overweight players. And, and, and the big lads giving them good service, Pogba. Yeah. So, no, they're playing well. Yeah. Newcastle, Cardiff, we discussed. How do you read it? I like Newcastle, Paul. It's make or break. You know, they've got to go for it. They don't get a result here. They're in serious trouble. Yeah. I like Newcastle. Okay, then Southampton haven't been playing that bad. Yeah, I watched a little bit of them last night against uh, Derby. You know, yes. the VAR. And it was offside Derby's goal. Yeah. I watched yeah. the first half. What was the final score? It were, Derby won on penalties. They were 2-0 mm -hmm. up, 2-2. Two, two. Right. So, uh, you know, I think Southampton get another result. Everett's are another strange team. Who won on penalties? Derby? Derby won on That's penalties, right, yeah. yeah. So, uh of the two teams, I like Southampton, Paul, but a draw, a big player. I think yeah, Everton boss is still under pressure. Yeah, Marco yeah. Silva. Did they beat Bolton last time? No, uh, they beat uh, yeah. Bournemouth. Uh, Bournemouth, what I saying? Yeah, 2 0, but the fans yeah. don't look happy there, Paul. Yeah, but uh, the Bournemouth were strong. Yeah. Okay, they don't look happy, you're right. They're, they're, there's something not right with Everton. Yeah. Okay, Watford, they're up and yeah, down. Yeah, I like and... Watford, Paul. They're seventh. They've done a good job. Now, Burnley have won their last three games. Yeah. But uh, I like Watford, the two teams. Physically, I just think they've got better attacking players. Paul. Troy Deeney. <laughs> Troy Deeney. You know, they've, they've got, got a um, great Delefo, Yeah, They've got Decore. De they've got He's good players, player, Paul, yeah. you know. I think they'll be too Arsenal, good. Arsenal, Chelsea, you're going to draw? Yeah, I think a draw, Paul. I can't have either team. How does field are going to get rolled? No, they're going to get murdered. They're going to get uh, rolled. Manson, no chance there. And then I, I've, I certainly think Spurs are too much ammunition. Yeah, I think Spurs Fulham. will be too good. Too good for Fulham. You know, Fulham have to have a go. They dodge at the back. Yeah, Lucas We're Moura, not Oriente. At the back. Uh, but, seen. you know, you've got the two boys that... Yeah, we can uh, hold them off. You can hold them off. I think Spurs will win easy. Yeah, so do I. OK, now the championship's getting very interesting. Oh. Heard you and Steve touching on this. Yeah. Uh, a Norwich Birmingham, good game. Yeah, it's a Friday night game, Paul. Pity we won't get it. But, uh, you know, Birmingham unbeaten the last four. Now, Norwich have been against the last few weeks, but they have won five of their last seven at home. So you've got, obviously, the odds favour them, Paul, yeah. but they draw a big player for me there. OK, Aston Villa. I Hulls, can't have Hulls Aston City. Villa, Hulls City, Paul. amazing. They've won the last six, the last nine. They won seven, drawn two, the last nine. 27 at 10 is a big price. I think Villa overrated. I watched them against Swansea in the FA Cup, Paul. But Tommy Abrams back. Last week they got beat Tammy three. Abrams. Tammy Abrams. They yeah. got beat 3 0 at Wigan. Is he a Chelsea boy? He's a Chelsea guy on loan. He's a guy that turned down 120000 a week from Wolves on a permanent deal. So he's taking the 40 odd from uh, Aston Villa. So he's got obviously bigger sights. Mm. But uh, I can't have Aston Villa. Hull City in a draw for me there, Paul. Blackburn have such a Yeah, Blackburn played 24. well against Newcastle, Paul. They got beaten extra time in the Cup. You know, Ipswich are a funny team. They're going to have to go for it, Paul. They're bottom yeah. of the league. Goals, to me, looks a certainty. Don't be upset if there's a, an, an upset, you know, the I draw Ipswich. Upset. You know, I think this is a funny game, especially after the FA Cup where Blackburn had a full go. Derby County too well, strong Derby for as Reading. Well, they, I don't know, Paul. You know, Reading beat uh, Notts Forest 2-0 last week. And I watched them against United in the Cup. They played well. Hmm. Yeah, they're in relegation yeah, they trouble. Well. Yeah, Derby had a full go last night, Paul. 
So they'll be a bit ch tired. They're going to obviously have to make changes. And it's another game uh, I don't think mm. six to ten is a good bet in. Middlesbrough, Millwall. Yeah, I fancy Middlesbrough, Paul. They slowly but surely, the Tony Pulis effect, they're starting to grind out results, Paul. Yeah. I think they're up to fifth, eight to ten. They've lost a bit bets. of flair, Budge. Yeah. They're they never had flair. Yeah, All much the teams, doer, yeah. but hard to beat. Forest, new management, yeah, well, Bristol. That's a spark. I couldn't have them before. Bristol are seventh, eh? Yeah, they're seventh, the seventh of the round. They're just outside the playoffs. Unbeaten in nine. Don't be surprised if they get another result. But the Martin O'Neill effect, I'll obviously have the crowd up and baying for blood. So it's a field job for me there. But before the signing, before he's obviously the managerial appointment, was Bristol in the draw. Preston got a lot to do away from home. Yeah, Paul, we don't score many goals away from home. QPR are going well at home, Paul. Steve McLaren's done well. 11 at 10 should be in the bets, but obviously Preston's my team, Paul. Yeah. But okay. uh, QPR obviously favourites there. Rather than Brentford, oh, this what is a my lurker of the weekend, Paul. I can't have Brentford. Yeah, the last 15 Rotherham games they haven't 21st. won. 21st. Yeah, I know, but I've had a look at them at home. The only team that's rolled them at home was West Brom. They drew with Sheffield United. They beat Preston. They're unbeaten the last six at home, Paul. Okay. I like Rotherham with the two teams, you know. Brentford, I know they're unbeaten the last five, Brentford, but away from home, they're terrible. I don't think it's 17 games they haven't won for away from home, Brentford. <sighs> So uh, for me, I can't have uh, Brentford. You know that away. Sheffield Wednesday, Wigan. Yeah, I like Sheffield Wednesday. Steve Bruce has taken over there at the end of the month. He's got everything in plan. Fourteen to tens in my bets. So They're going well at home. Wigan away from home. They've got the worst away yeah, record. Shocking. Two wins, none losses. Just can't losses. believe it. At two home, draws, none losses. You know, last they haven't two points, eleven away league games. Can't have them. Sheffield Wednesday for me. Stoke City Leeds. Yeah, Paul, another game. Stoke City. Game. Clear game. Now they've been exposed, but Stoke City, they're under a new manager. They've got Nathan Jones from Luton. They got knocked out of the cup by Shrewsbury. Mm. So all's not well there, Paul. Leeds United for me there. Swansea. Swansea got better and more points away from home than they have at home lately. You know, Sheffield United, they're second in the league. They're going well. It'll be a whole close game, Paul. Sheffield United in the draw for me there. Bolton, West yeah, Brom. I fancy, I mean, uh, West Brom, Paul. I think 7 to 10 is a good bit. There's trouble at Bolton. Yeah. They want the club out, management. It's a Monday night game at West Brom for me. PSL results, but let's go and yeah. talk about them. During the week, Sundowns beat Maritzburg. Yeah, 1 0. I saw the goal. It was a good goal from outside the box. Amazulu got beat at home 2 I watched it, Paul. Yeah, they equalised. And I don't know what uh, Mark van Dievertsen was doing. The ball got played. They were playing three defence, three band three at the back. And he chased it to go and uh, win the head, and he lost it. And the Chiefs boy just and hit. A minute later, they scored, went 2-1 up Chiefs. And it went 3-1. They equalised at the end, injury time. But it was a good game. Equalised? Sorry, sorry, they scored 3-2. They scored yeah. injury time, 3-2. Yeah. But uh, Chiefs are slowly but surely coming right, Paul. Yeah. But Tamazulu played well, it's just they never beat Chiefs. Yeah. It's 24 they don't. games they now. They don't, yeah. Haven't beat Cape Town City, 5-0. Yeah, but uh, it was 1-0 and Free State Stars had a player sent off. Well, that's but, uh, Just talking about the PSL standing, yeah. uh, our boys still on top. But yeah, Vitz, Gavin's hanging in 33 there. 33 for 17, Orlando Pirates 31 from 17. Then, remember that Sundowns? 14 games, so they can get to the nine points. Yeah, they'll, they'll go top. Be, they'll go top, Paul. They've got CAF again this weekend. That's why they're not playing. Cape Town City, yeah, 27 points. And then Kaiser Chiefs played 18 games. Yeah, played the bottom, Marisburg United, 17 games, 11 points. Chippy United, 17 games, 12 points. Yeah. And then Barocca, 15 points. Yeah, there's a bit of a gap, Paul. Yeah, yeah. So it's the bottom two. Eh? Yeah, and they play each other this week too. Where? At Chipper. Ooh, so, Marisburg uh, got to get the worst scenario they draw. They got no chance, Paul. Right, so that's, that's the first game. Chipper yeah. Marisburg. Yeah, Paul. Of the two teams, Paul, Chipper haven't won in ten. Marisburg haven't won in eleven. Jeez. The last six away games for Marisburg, they haven't scored. So I think Chipper will sneak at one nil, Paul. But okay. seventeen to ten, a draw is obviously a player. Black um, Leopards. Uh, Black Leopards under Dylan Kerr's taken over. He's an ex Arcadia boy. Four games he's been there. They've won three and drawn one. So well, he's got them going well. Arrows? Steve Compella, two games, they've got four points. They fought hard against Celtic. Be a good I like, game. Yeah, it should be competitive. I like Leopards of the two teams, Paul, especially at home. But don't be surprised if that ends in a draw as well. Supersport, Bloom? I just can't have either team, Paul. You know, Supersport, I'm disappointed in. I think they've won yeah. one of the last six. You've got to favour them at home. You know, Steve Bloemfontein, Celtic, they've got trouble with a receiver. They've got no coach. So uh, you'd expect Supersport to get a result there, Paul. Polokwani, bid I think this should be a good game. I can't believe Vitz are 21 to 10. They've got more points away from home recently yeah. than at home. Yeah. You know, Polokwani, a funny team, Paul. They're close up there, but uh, 
Yeah, I like 21 six. to 10 bits. I think it's I'll a good bet. i go for a bit of that. Yeah. Right, let's look at your sixes, but tell us about your sixes. Yeah, I start off, it's the, obviously, the South African one. I've gone Chipper United, win and draw at home against Maritzburg. I'm looking for the upset, Paul. I watched Real Madrid. They were lucky to beat Real Batiste last week. I think Seville can stun them. So I've gone the field in the Real Madrid-Seville game. I've banked Atletico Madrid to beat Uesca. I've gone Black Leopards win and draw at home against Golden Arrows. I think Sundowns will be too good for White at Casablanca. And I've gone the field in the Celta Vigo Valencia game. 2 one 6 Okie dokie. Yeah, the English one, I've gone three bankers, three fields. I've gone the field with Bournemouth West Ham. I've banked Liverpool to beat Palace, Man United to beat Brighton, and Newcastle to beat Cardiff. And I've gone the field with Southampton, Everton, and Watford Burnley, 162. Okay. On to the 10, I've, I like West Ham of the two. I've gone West Ham win and draw at Bournemouth. I've banked Liverpool to beat Palace, Man United to beat Brighton, Newcastle to beat Cardiff. You know, I've gone Bristol City win and draw at Nottingham Forest. Second page, I've gone Southampton win and draw against Everton. I've gone Leeds United win and draw at Stoke City. I've gone Watford win and draw at home against Burnley. I've gone with Sheffield United win and draw at Swansea. And I've sided with Chelsea win and draw at Arsenal, 256. Great game to watch. Yep. So That's 13, but Yeah, the 13, yeah, usual five bankers, eight win and draws. I've gone Chelsea win and draw at Arsenal. I've banked Liverpool to beat Palace. I've banked Man United to beat Brighton. I've gone uh, West Ham win and draw at Bournemouth. I've banked Newcastle to beat Cardiff. Southampton win and draw at home against Everton. I've sided with Watford win and draw at home against Burnley. Second page, I've gone Hull City win and draw at Aston Villa. I've banked Middlesbrough to beat Millwall. I've gone Bristol City win and draw at Notts Forest. I've gone QPR win and draw against Preston. I've banked Sheffield Wednesday to beat Wigan. And I've gone Leeds United, win and draw at Stoke City, 435. Budget's best bets. Yeah, I'll pull on to the first bet as our premiership, quite a bit of a mouthful this week. But I've gone Newcastle to beat Cardiff. I've gone Tottenham to beat Fulham and over two and a half total goals in the game. I've gone in, Ma- in, in the Spurs game? In the Spurs okay. game, yeah. I've gone Man United to score in both halves against Brighton. And I've gone over three and a half goals in the Huddersfield Man City game even money I thought wow. it was absolute I know it's a wow. lot of goals Paul lot but goals. the way Man City are playing and Huddersfield yeah. are struggling I think it's 4-5 there on to the championship I've gone uh, Middlesbrough to beat Millwall I've gone Sheffield Wednesday to beat Wigan I've gone West Brom to beat Bolton and I've gone over 2.5 goals in the Derby Reading game 2,500 to 200 win or draw the win or draw father yeah I've gone uh, Bidvest Vitz to win and draw at Polakwani I've gone with Hull City to get a positive result against Aston Villa. I've gone for Rotherham, win and draw at home against Brentford. I like Athletic Bilbao to get at least a good result at Villa Real. And the value one, I'm going Sevilla to get a good result at Real Madrid on Saturday, Paul, 2,900 to 200. Uh, both teams to score games, I've gone Bournemouth, West Ham, Liverpool, Crystal Palace, Southampton, Everton, Blackburn, Ipswich, and QPR, Preston. The Spanish omelette. The Spanish omelette. Yeah, I threw one extra, Paul. I'll explain it. Well, I've gone Atletico Madrid to beat Uesca. I think Arba will be too good for Espanyol. I've gone Barcelona to score in both halves against Leganes. That was the extra the one. Hey, well, they're five points clear. Yeah, that was the one I threw in late. I've gone both teams to score. Villarreal, Atletico Bilbao, and Rayo Vallecano against Real Sociedad. 2,800 The Colos King? 200. The Colos King, yeah. I've gone Man City to beat Huddersfield. Newcastle to beat Cardiff. I've gone Spurs to beat Fulham. I've gone Middlesbrough to beat Millwall. I've gone West Brom to beat Bolton and Atletico Bilbao to beat Huesca, 4,200 to 200. All right, now, Budge, every week the best bet's going great now. Uh, do you go on Newcastle United this Yeah, week? I just think, Paul, even money. I know it was nice to turn on our screen, but I looked this way, even money. It's just make or break, Paul. You know, they're far better than Cardiff. Yeah. Cardiff aren't going to score, in my opinion. You know, Rafa Benitez is a bit like Mourinho. He's a bit of a tactical manager, but they've got to have a go for it, Paul. Yeah. And the even money, I think, is a good bet. Yeah, there okay. are the one or two, six, seven or ten teams that I like. But I just think even money is normal yeah. bet we go for. Bet. And that, and that then, was my best bet, Newcastle. And then, uh, your value bet last week, you had Watford. Well, I had Watford, yeah. Watford Paul. won at 5-2. Now yeah. you got 28-10, to 10, Rotherham. I just think Rotherham, Paul. Let's look at Brentford. I just don't like Brentford. Rotherham being competitive against good teams lately. Yeah. So 28-10, to 10, 
I just think it's a good price, Paul. Yeah. You know, I think it's uh, like 11 to 10 win and draw. So, Jeez. but our uh, 28 to 10, you know, last week it killed me when Leicester got beat after yeah. taking the double with Watford. But uh, you know, that's my play, Paul, as the outsider for the week is Rodham, 28 to 10. All right, Budge, that's excellent. Don't forget, uh, last one standing, eight people left. Get your bets into Budge and we'll hopefully next week be giving you the winner. <laughs> Until next time, stay on side.